What is the weekly best podcast listener contest passphrase? <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you this early in the podcast. Free stuff. Want some? Want free stuff while also supporting this podcast? Then head on over to MarkRomanEmpire.com and click support. Discover free stuff from companies like Coffee Bean, Farmer Boys, Uber, and Lyft. Plus, groovy products and services from all our sponsors. Healthy lists that keep growing. Before you buy anything, make sure your purchases count. Take advantage of select offers while knowing you are helping me record one more podcast. MarkRomanEmpire.com. Click support. Want $5 while supporting this podcast? Try Cash App. I did. Link to debit card. Send at least $5 via Cash App. Then $5 was instantly added to my Cash App account. Use my code WKXRVBX to support me and earn $5 with Cash App available in your app store. Sponsored by Vegas 90210, Lieutenant Frank. As hired by a California Highway Patrolman for a CHP Lieutenant Promotion Luncheon. As hired by a wedding party in Vegas to escort bride and groom from limo to the Bellagio. Lieutenant Frank. Hollywood Cap. Beetlejuice. Ron Burgundy. More. Your Halloween holiday party? Got any characters of Vegas 90210? Book one today at Vegas90210.com. You know, like the Tory Spelling Vehicle. But, as Jeff Garland likes to say, hello, nurse. And we are go for podcast. Spread the news like mayonnaise on toast. Gary, I have a mission for you. Flux capacitor? Uh, okie dokie. But let me tell you about that time I drove a cab. Money that's something. Chicks that read. I want my more TV. Um, first, you're not on TV. Uh, pod cast. Now, that is some weird and wild stuff. Did you know that, Ed? Yes. Ah, oh, well, Robin attended Juilliard. I attended Hillsdale. I'm a graduate of the San Francisco Comedy College. I've traveled the Midwest quite extensively. I lived through the Big Short and had a pretty good time doing that. I've seen Pat Robertson jabber about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a subversive. So what do you think? Do you think I'm qualified? Oh, well, I think we'll need to pray about that and ask your father. Shut up, Marilyn! The Mark Roman Empire. Also, a podcast. It's showtime! Help. I need somebody help, not just anybody help. You know, I need someone help. When I was young, was so much younger than today. I never needed anybody's help in any way. But now these days are gone. I'm not so self-assured. Now I find I've changed my mind. I'm open up the doors. Help me if you can. I'm feeling down. And I do appreciate you being round. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? That was my Markioki of Help by the Beatles. I don't think I had an explanation point, but I feel like you got to read it that way. Because it's not just my singing that <laughs> desperately needs help. Help is what nurses deliver professionally. But sometimes nurses go rogue. Ursilia Pompilio is one such nurse. And my guest today on the pod. Oh, hi there. I'm Mark Roman. Mark who? 
Mark Roman, you know, like the Empire. Jesus, after this past week, I think we could all use a nurse (laughs) or a vacation. But we do have that midterm election coming up. Our American right to literally shuffle the congressional deck. All of it. But more on that on the election special next week with Ace Katana of Ground Game LA. We continue to record here at Young Records, J-U-N-G, Young Records, here in North Hollywood, carefully nestled in the wardrobe houses, car crushing yards, and strip club next door district. Doris is on sound because hashtag it takes an audio lady. Finally, Doris, welcome to the Mark Roman Empire. Also a podcast. How's things? Good to hear. Welcome, Dano. Oh, shut up, Marilyn. Greg Proops on the Instagram where he's Proop Dog. Sir Gregory did hit me to a groovy poem. Can I read it to you? This is from Wendy Cope, the poet. Differences of opinion. One, he tells her. He tells her that the earth is flat. He knows the facts, and that is that. In altercations fierce and long, she tries her best to prove him wrong. But he has learned to argue well. He calls her arguments unsound and often asks her not to yell. She cannot win. He stands his ground. The planet goes on being round. How about a new segment, kids? A new segment on the podcast here. 8675030 The numbers, you guessed it. First number, 44 million. That's the number of Americans who have no health insurance. 38 million. The number of Americans who have inadequate health insurance. 8,986, the number of citations Lieutenant Frank has issued citizens to date. 1,462, the number of connections of mine as Mark Roman on LinkedIn. 1,452, the number of followers on my Vegas 90210 on Instagram. 1,000. 98, the number of followers of my at the Mark Roman on Twitter. 748, the number of likes of Mark Roman Empire page on Facebook. 146, the number of listens of the most popular episode of this podcast as of today's recording. 221, oh yeah, I went up there, kids. The number of female members of Congress. If Congress reflected the population. Yeah, it seemed high in there, right? 137, the number of congressional patriarchy. Men holding seats belonging to women. 84, the number of actual female members of Congress. 51. The number of female U.S. Senators, if the U.S. Senate reflected the population. That means 28, the number of U.S. Senate patriarchy, men holding seats belonging to women. Are you noticing a pattern here? 23. The number of actual female U.S. senators. There's a hundred of them. 23 out of a hundred. 51 out of a hundred is the population. 50.8, okay? Do you want 0.8 of a senator? Hey, 
Don't answer that. 22, the number of years UN scientists estimate we have left until coastlines are inundated while droughts and poverty intensify. If greenhouse gas emissions continue at current levels. Six, the number of the day, a Tuesday in November of the election. We got another new segment on the podcast. A lot of first today. Wow. Yeah. D- did you get the memo? Breaking news. This just in. Lee Cock. See him in the new trailer for Clint Eastwood film The Mule. I interviewed Lee and we talked about working with Clint Eastwood on podcast number six. Deborah Hayden. She and Mars Roberge. Robert, Mars, I'm sorry, buddy. I know Deborah told me when I meet you in person one of these days, okay, you'll tell me and it, it'll stick, you know, stick in here forever. I'm pointing on my head for those of you who are visually impaired while listening to my podcast, which would be all of you. Mars, can we just call Mars? Mars and Deborah accepted the award for best film at the Planet Nine Film Festival for their work in the film Scumbag, now streaming on Amazon. As you may recall, I interviewed feminine oddity Deborah on podcast number four. And then Sammy obeyed. Travel ban. Make America laugh again. This new film is about to release. Uh, Sammy's in it. I interviewed Sammy, who's running for president in 2036. I interviewed Sammy on podcast number five. Is he a mambo? I don't know. All right, fan mail. You know, I keep telling you guys, I'm not sure you're listening, but I'll keep telling you until you do. You can write the podcast at romanpodmail at gmail.com. Perhaps you, dear listener, yes, you listening right now. You, I'm, yeah, I'm talking to you. you yes, yeah, you, yes, you. You, perhaps you can be the first. But we got to settle for other ways that people react to me, okay? That's, I guess that's what we're going to do every week here. That's okay. So a buddy from grade school and Boy Scouts sent me a message via social media recently asking if I ever thought about seeing how I could get on the Joe Rogan podcast. You know, the guy who does the MMA stuff and um, uh, the Fear Factor guy, that guy, yeah. He also happens to be a stand-up comic. So my buddy thought if I got on the Joe Rogan podcast, I could tell my story about my college paper and all the BS after it. I'm kind of quoting my buddy here a little bit. A day or so later, uh, last week's podcast, in fact, the Freddie Morales episode, Devotional Dave of the tribute band, the uh, Depeche Mode should be banned devotional. That podcast dropped where I shared some of my heavy glimpses of a bit of the traumas Brett Kavanaugh triggered in me, including my story about my college paper and all the BS after it. So listen to that episode, my fellow Eagle Scout, and share it with others. As far as Joe Rogan... Uh, might be a little early. I mean, I'd love to be on Rogan's podcast. Frankly, I'd love to be on anyone's podcast. Because I like to talk. And I wouldn't mind the exposure as it's early days here on the podcast. And I'm hungry for listeners, not going to lie. See, I do have my own podcast, you see. I guess with Rogan, I feel like there might be a right time. If I approach him now, though, he'd be like, uh, who the hell are you? He doesn't know me. I mean, he knows uh, some people who do know me, but they don't know about the Hillsdale stuff. They just know the Lieutenant Frank and Rainbow Tactical Leg Warmer stuff. You know, I guess it's all about matching the right story with the right feel with the right moment. Uh, I imagine as this podcast gets more steam and I can maybe get back into doing some stand-up comedy, I'll become more of a known quantity here in town. I mean... <laughs> I'm no Elon Musk. Rogan's not seeking me out. 
yet. But if someday I do a set at the store or the improv or the Laugh Factory and I happen to run into them, who knows? Well, there might be an opportunity. I don't know. What I really need to do is get my story down. <laughs> That's a fucking process. It's taken decades just to get to where I could write my poem, Son of Elmer Gantry's Bitch. Trying to find the funny and all that and translate that into an act I can perform on stage for a few minutes for drunk people, that's a fucking excruciating chore. But I'm doing it. But it takes time. It might also show up in a book I write or a one-man show or perform. All further stuff that takes time and resources and energy. I know it's in me. It needs to be expressed. And it will. Right now, for me, my podcast is the thing. It's the next step in my artistic process. So, anyone who thinks my Hillsdale story needs to be told and heard, please consider doing what you can to support this podcast. Go to markromanempire.com and click support. I'm serious. I'm a working artist. I'm not asking for donations. I'm not. I've created artistic stuff of value. Hey, if you dig what I do, just consider buying my art. That's what helps me do more as an artist. I don't have a grant. I don't have wealthy relatives. I'm just a working artist. I don't have a grant. I don't have wealthy relatives. I'm just a working artist. Yeah, I had to repeat myself because I don't think he heard me the first time. I'm still recovering from the big short, from divorce and from being an expelled student editor on the FBI's subversives list. Not to mention growing up the son of Elmer Gantry's bitch. I'm just trying to keep it together day by day. Hopefully, creating a little laughter along the way. Hey, uh, can we do a little, little, little sponsors spots here? Hey, when's the last time you explored the podcast website? MarkRomanEmpire.com. Like the podcast, I keep adding to and improving the website week by week. One page you may want to consult on the regular is the support page like free stuff, want free stuff while also supporting this podcast, I got you. Head on over to markromanempire.com and click support. Discover free stuff from companies like, oh, I don't know, Coffee Bean, Farmer Boys, Uber, and Lyft. Don't forget all the groovy products and services from our all our sponsors. Or my groovy merch, my poem, as well as Lieutenant Frank's citations and headshots. Healthy lists that keep growing. Maybe you're fixing to buy something or try a new app. You don't even know how the purchase you already planned could at the same time support this podcast. Learn how. Before you buy anything, make sure your purchases count. Take advantage of select offers while knowing you are helping me record one more podcast. MarkRomanEmpire.com. Click support. Tiger's blood winning. This week's Mark Roman Empire, also a podcast, best listener contest passphrase is... Ursilia Pompilio might nurse my health industry hangover if I listen to her nurses and hypochondriacs podcast. The Mark Roman Empire, also a podcast, is sponsored by Ella Dawn Designs. There's got to be a better way to travel with your shoes. Now, there is. The trademarked Ultimate Shoe Bag by Eladon Designs. Travel your shoes easier. Up to eight pairs at a time. Many styles to choose. 
To view the commercial and demo video, go to eladondesigns.com. Hey, save 10% when you use discount code ROMAN at checkout. eladondesigns.com. Also sponsored by Fire Your Boss and Build Your Empire. A new talk by yours truly, Mark Roman. Whether you are self-employed, work for someone else, or lead a group seeking to make the world a better place, you'll want to hear what I have to say. I'm a subversive. I'm a survivor. I'm a sag after working artist in Hollywood. I was ruled a celebrity by a federal judge years before I ever set foot on a comedy stage or a Hollywood soundstage. Empower yourself. Empower your team. Discover how to innovate doing what you love. In spite of the economy, child custody battles, multiple PTSDs, and those with the power to add a kid to the FBI's subversives list. Doing it all while feeling like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Just happy to be here. Consider speaker Mark Roman's new talk, Fire Your Boss and Build Your Empire. I am Mark Roman. For more information, including fee and no fee options, go to themarkroman.com and click speaker. Okay, did I hope you guys, did you hear? Did you hear? I snuck it in there. The best listener contest passphrase, which kind of begs the question, what is the weekly best listener contest? Glad you asked. When you go to markromanempire.com and click win, here's what you'll find. Contest, weekly best listener, qualifications, no purchase necessary. There's nine things to do. Is that complicated? Hey, it's worth it. Okay, pay attention here. Number one, subscribe to the census. There's a link to the census, so you can do that. Number two, print the MRE, that's Mark Roman Empire, podcast flyer, also a link there, so you can print that flyer out. Number three, you'll want to post that printed flyer to a groovy visible location like social or me, uh, bulletin boards in real life, okay? Community, park, office, etc. Number four, take a selfie with your posted flyer. Number five, post on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn with the hashtag, hashtag Mark Roman Empire. Just one hashtag, okay? In front. You know how to do hashtags. I don't need to tell you. Well, some of you. Don't get me started. All right, number six, tag Mark or the MRE podcast on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Pick your favorite, okay? And I got links to who I am on each of those platform or those social media platforms so you can figure out how to tag me, all right? Number seven, like or follow Mark or the Mark Roman Empire on the social media where tagged. Number eight, reply to the week's census email. Are you getting that? Did you get one this week on Monday? If not, go back to step one. Anyway, back to step eight. Reply to the week's census email with two things. A link to your social media post that you just did in the previous steps. And secondly, number B, that contest passphrase I just gave you mentioned during the week's podcast, which we just did for the first time this week, which you heard while listening to this podcast. You getting it? Okay. And by the way, for, uh, for those of you who want to take advantage of the Freddie Morales episode, uh, I had yet to invent this, so there's no passphrase in that, but I posted it on social media. So if you saw that yesterday, good for you. If you didn't see it, I guess you're going to have to go back and find it, aren't you now? Okay. You're welcome. Number nine, your qualified entry drawn. Yeah, just because you do all this stuff doesn't mean you automatically win. It qualifies you, and then there, someone's going to pick. I don't know who that person's going to be. Maybe it's a guest. Maybe it's me. 
I don't know. Um, maybe it's the little person who's, um, you know, looking at me right now going like, why am I not in a certain union that does this sort of thing? You want to go play a pool? Yeah, let's go. I, I think they got a pool table at the strip club next door. Okay. Anyway. What? I got to do this podcast. Okay. Yeah, we'll go drink. Yeah, we will. We will. Sorry, guys. Just, you know. You, you bring your entourage, things happen, all right? Anyway, nine, your qualified entry drawn makes you the winner of an autograph Lieutenant Frank headshot. Oh, yeah, like the one Simon Cowell got. Plus, you didn't hear a drum roll because this is a low-budget operation here, so just imagine one, okay? Plus, a bonus surprise. <laughs> what is the bonus surprise? You understand if I told you, it would no longer be a surprise. You get that, right? Okay, I like that about you. You can continue to be one of my listeners. I'm proud of you. These are a few of my favorite things. Oh, my God. That's like so L.A. Runyon Canyon. Cliche? Absolutely. Correct? Completely. It's practically in my backyard. I can walk to it in minutes. It's a hill. Now, for those of you uh, at Hillsdale, the Harvard of the Midwest, it's a dry but glorious Swiss mountain enjoyed only by the far left ultra liberal Hollywood elite. Up there, I can see the city of angels spread before me to the left. I can see the Pacific Ocean to my right. I can see the. <coughs> <laughs> smog I couldn't do those things during those two years in Vegas come on Runyon it's a great workout hashtag nature sunshine vitamin D the way the sweet baby Jesus intended like too much of it though and you get cancer OPP other people's pets I pet him, you feed him, and clean up that enormous dog crap. Not my job. Hilarious Hollywood conversations overheard. You just thought of one, so why do I need to give you one, okay? The beautiful people. The locks on the fence. Seriously, what's that all about? No, don't explain it. I've already heard it. Still makes no sense whatsoever. Ross Michael Johnson and I, st that's Hollywood Wolverine. Listen to him on episode three, I believe. Ross and I still want to know, where's the gondola? Where is it? Uh, not the gondola. Runyon Canyon. Ooh, yeah. About that. Do you have your pass? Like, with you? For the complete list in progress, of my favorite things, go to markromanempire.com and click favorite things. The week. All right, we got some cool Twitter posts for you guys. We'll have this on the show notes. Check it out. There's the uh, my this is my son hashtag him to entry. <laughs> like it's a little obscure, but you know, it's how I do. Okay. Uh, writing candidates no more. This was a shock to me. Maybe it's a shock to you. Uh, got the link to the article though with the d details. That's no fake news. That's a true story. Uh, Lady Gaga on Colbert. Hint, it's not about a star is born. Vital watching. Hollywood Caps tweet to Captain Marvel, Brie Larson. And the latest entry in hashtag Eddie Pepitone tonight show. Seriously, Eddie. Someone who might know someone who might know you or know someone that walked past you once at that deli. Uh, when do you want to do the show, buddy? I mean, you said, yeah, just, you know, booking in February now. Yeah. Okay. What other, what else do we got on the Twitter posts? Oh, fake tycoon with the orange shroom. That phrase is mine. It's documented. Go check my tweet, okay? So that's uh, my Twitter post at the Mark Roman. Let's go over to the Instagram post for those of you who like to read pictures. That's at Vegas90210. 
Hulk got ice cream. Lieutenant Frank with the Bang Girls at the Chargers game. Not only is there a photo, there's a video. Tinder profile picture, including Lieutenant Frank. If you haven't seen that, you kind of you kind of owe it to yourself. Yeah. Devotional Dave edit of Freddie Morales interview rap on YouTube. And remembering Prince St. Paul. So I'm about to kill my movie pass. It's like when hiking in the wilderness and you chance upon a mortally wounded squirrel crushed by fleeing antelope writhing in pain. It's just the right thing to do. But I had to decide to take one last look. What's playing? Lo and behold, a star is born. They got me for another month. And wow, a star is born. Definitely not overhyped. I cried early in the film. If you don't, then you can't sit with us or be my friend. Cannot. Maybe you should be my attorney or agent. But I know you are a heartless Cylon. Now, ever since Bradley Cooper's frat boy, I love to hate the wedding crashers. I mean, I've been struggling to not like him. The struggle is over. I give up. Bradley Cooper, you sneaky, multi-talented son of a bitch. Well done, you. I believed Lady Gaga was the diva next door. I dig Lady Gaga. You don't have to like her mojo or her music, but you are obligated to bow in reverence to her immaculate voice. And I believe that Dice, oh yeah, the one and only Andrew Dice Clay, that Dice knew a guy who knew made guys. And that in spite of all his, what I do is his, his character loved his daughter. Did we need Sam Elliott to make it better? No. But he did. Sam could read Ryan Seacrest's psychiatric file, and it would sound like medically induced butterflies carrying you to a neverland of milk and honey and manly unicorns and bourbon that tastes like champagne. But wait, there's Dave Chappelle. You'll wish the best neighbor you ever had was even the tiniest fraction of. I got you, as Dave's character. Such great actors, such great economy, pacing, breathing. Brad Cooper brought simplicity back, and it crashes into you like a stampede of horses storming across the prairie. You just got to go see it. Even if talking about it annoys Bill Burr on tour. Where can you see me next? Well, Lieutenant Frank cameos on Hollywood Boulevard, um, they happen. They could happen again. Just saying. Lieutenant Frank at a football tailgate. Let's see. All we got coming up in the next week would be on the 20th of October, UCLA versus Arizona. That'll be, uh, that would be over at the Rose Bowl. Hollywood cap on Hollywood Boulevard with the Hollywood Avengers with Hollywood Iron Man and Hollywood Wolverine. Oh, and also we've now got uh, Hollywood Spidey. He's pretty legit, uh, which is saying a lot for the Spideys on the boulevard. Uh, are you listening, Jimmy? Jimmy Kimmel with your little podcast, okay? Um, he's, he's fit. He's svelte. He's the right shape. And he's... Uh, He's, he, he's, it's like he does Cirque du Soleil. You got to see this guy. We love him. He's been officially knighted into the Hollywood Avengers. Now you can listen to the podcast at Mixcloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and YouTube where I'm Mark Roman Empire. On SoundCloud, Mark Roman Podcast. MarkRomanEmpire.com has all the links plus rolling new grooviness. My interview guest today is Ursilia Pompilio. She's a nurse. Why is a nurse on the podcast? Fair question. She is a rogue nurse. I'm a subversive. So there's that. But my first role acting in television, as fate would have it, was as a nurse. Indeed, 
a male nurse. It's Roman, not Fokker. Ursilia also has a podcast, Nurses and Hypochondriacs. Students can even get college credit for listening to her podcast, right? We'll certainly delve into that a little. She's been podcasting longer than me, so I've been grateful to learn a thing or two from her about the world of the pod. Ursilia also has some specific ideas about the difference between hospitals and nursing on TV and film versus IRL in real life for all you non-millennials. Hey, let's get to know Nurse Ursilia. Ursilia Pompilio, tell me I pronounced your name correctly, please. You did. Okay. Of course you did. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, I'd have to go back and like re-record the monologue and the <laughs> intro and the whole thing. So good, 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 good. Well, it's great to have you on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me on, Mark. Fellow podcaster. Yes, fellow podcaster. Can we start at the beginning? We can start at the very okay. beginning. Of how we met. Sure. Where, where, where did we meet? Where <laughs> did we meet? We met on Bumble. We did. That's not a product endorsement. It's just a statement of fact. Okay. <laughs> Although Bumble, if you wish to, and you know, pay for this afterwards, well, our people, your people. Yeah, well, it's a great networking site too. It is you know? right. I've met so many great like work people off yeah. of Bumble. Well, and I, a lot, I see a lot of people have that on there, and that's kind of what I have on my profile too. It's like, hey, I'm looking to meet, you know, new people or friends like and all kinds of other things. Exactly, because you never know. It's like or you got to meet a person, see if there's chemistry. There's like a whole bunch of other. Th- <laughs> stuff that you got to check out it's like you know who knows but yeah it's a great way great way. i've met a number of people that way through yeah different, it's different cool. dating apps. yeah it's fun it's los angeles right and i mm-hmm. quickly learned that you are a podcaster and i was like ooh, we gotta talk about that yeah whatever else happens we gotta talk about the podcast exactly so and you've been podcasting now for a year for you? about a year yeah okay. so it's been great it's uh Lots of twists and turns in the podcasting world, but right. um, it's I just published an article on nurses and podcasting and how to jump into it. It's a great branding tool. Wouldn't nice. you agree, right? When, when did you publish that? Uh, last month. Last month, In okay. Working Nurse Magazine, yeah. Okay, so which I'm sure the, all our listeners oh, they avidly all get it for read free, and subscribe for free to. free <laughs> in the mail. It comes out. It's one of those free mailers. So, if okay, you're so who nurse. reads it? Is that like people like if they're- Mostly if you, nurses. If you're licensed? Yeah. Is that how it works? Uh, okay. Mostly nurses, registered nurses, licensed okay. vocational nurses, it's nurse industry practitioners. Trade. Yeah. 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 Well, that's really cool. It's kind of like the variety for actors. Oh, thank you. Okay, that, well done. I see what you did. I see what you did. You That's like cool. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Notoriously single girl. That's right. That's my other uh, doppelganger side. So I am a single person dating expert, I guess. I've been single for 17 years. Okay. Um, Sounds I, like professionally. I'm a professional professionally single, single person. Okay. I respect yeah, yeah. that. I'm in a 12 step <laughs> program, remain a single guy myself, but I never thought. Dude, you should like totally go pro. I had no idea. Yeah, it's That's a whole a thing. revolution. Okay, you know, it's just be You're happy with yourself. You're taking me all kinds of stuff, or Celia. Right, right. Awesome. Yeah, it's we went to that networking event for Creative Morning. Yes, which is a, you invited me, yes. and yeah, because I'd never been Free to donuts. NPR Studios uh, West, which uh, I'm an avid podcast listeners listeners to this podcast now, and that includes, of course, NPR. How can I not? And so they would always reference that location. So it was kind of cool to actually go inside and see yeah, where they, City. they make yeah. the sausage, so to speak. <laughs> you know, well, because, you know, exactly. there's all those people. Like, it's true. It's fake news, fake news. OK, you're right. And you're like, there's, no, there's actually a headquarters. You know? Yeah. They're in liberal Hollywood in California. It's not like they go out and investigate <laughs> and have data or facts. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool, that networking thing. So I appreciate you inviting yeah. me to that. And you've hit me to fun. a number of different things. It's it's a lot to, someone was asking me the other day, I was talking to some, uh, booking some comics um, for future episodes yesterday. And one of them was like, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about starting a podcast. What's that all about? I'm like, well, frankly, it's like taking on a, a new full-time job. It, it there's so really, many really, to it. there's so many aspects to it. I mean, just the, uh, the marketing of it itself yeah, right? it is exactly. a lot of work with Instagram and social media and getting your podcast out there. Um, 
you know, networking is the key, though. There's so many great it, groups. Yeah. Yeah. You referenced Facebook. a couple that I still need to research that right, look right, really cool. Right. There's Thank like you for that. Earbuds Podcast, which yeah. is great. Um, I'm on one called She Podcast, which are very supportive and they'll give you little tidbits like, hey, I'm doing this. Or if I sound like is... I'm dressed in drag, could I, could, you know, <laughs> join I mean, it, join it. It works for John Cleese, so there, Eric but... Idle. Just saying. <laughs> Okay. True. It's it's the thing to do in Hollywood, right? Isn't that what you don't make it until you dress in drag? Isn't uh, that what they say? Is that it's maybe, very Illuminati? Is it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I can ever be part of the Illuminati because Tom Cruise follows me on Twitter, but I've yet to be approached by the Scientologists. So That's I feel right. like I'm blacklisted. Maybe it's because I'm on the FBI subversive list, which I know they know. And they got, they, I, from what I've got, they have a very specific, you know, criteria. And how do you know that you're on that list? So, I mean, we were talking about it in my car the other day, oh, well, well, a few weeks ago. And you said that you were on there. Did you ever get like a formal notice that you were well, on there? Well, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll answer this briefly because I went into detail on the podcast <laughs> last week. So, <laughs> check out Podcast Day with Freddie Morales. If you get on the monologue, I, I go pretty deep into this because. Brett, our our boy Brett, now in the court, he uh, he triggered that in me, among other things. Uh, I found out from my brother, who wanted to fly, so was seriously considering the Air Force. Um, I was dealing with multiple PTSDs, having just been kicked out of college. So I thought a really good idea was to join the Marine Corps. So I got into the delayed entry program. And of course my Marine Corps recruiter instantly being the good salesman that he was found out about my brother. And then he found the exact thing he needed to say to my brother, you know, the Marine Corps is the only branch of the military where you can fly a plane as an enlisted person. So he got nah, my brother and, uh, my brother gets out of boot camp. He goes and visits the Marine Corps recruiting sergeant. He's like, hey, what? It's kind of funny. I was going to go in the Air Force, but up in the Marine Corps. My brother was going to go in the Marine Corps, and he ended up just not, not going. And the sergeant goes, yeah, your brother was never going to be in the Marine Corps. <laughs> and my brother goes, mm, yeah, I know, because he tried the delayed entry program. You know, he realized it just it wasn't for him. That was in no, no shape. It was definitely not for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sergeant goes, yeah, no, it had nothing to do with your brother's choice. He's on the FBI's subversives list. He will never serve in the military. He will never hold any kind of military clearance as a civilian or in the military. He, he's done. He, he cannot be a Marine. So your brother told you this, not your... My brother's re uh, Marine Corps recruiting sergeant uh, uh, told me. Told you Told personally. my brother, who then told me. So to verify, uh, you know, I... I'm like months away from having been roommates with my college roommate and his father at that time was the sitting Republican uh, U.S. congressman uh, in the Bay Area, uh, Congressman Bill Baker. So we checked with Bill Baker uh, and he talked to his uh, contacts at the FBI and word came back. Uh, yep, you're on the list. Wow. Yeah. Of course, that begs the question. Well, why didn't he go? Hey, how? What? that's an outrage. Why do they put a kid? Yeah. A student editor on the FBI subversive list. Can we investigate and do all this sort of? No, no. But that kind of tells you a lot of what you need to know about Republicans yeah. and political conservatives. Crazy. Um, so now my, my thought is uh, I'd love to one day talk to Senator Kamala Harris because I kind of feel like she'd be the right person yeah, I to th ask I think you're the right. questions about all these these wealthy white Republican guys in the boys club. And how does, how did they put a kid, a student, uh, an a academic honor student, Eagle Scout on the FBI subversive list? Cause he dared to publish an independent student newspaper. I'd love to see her ask those questions, but yeah. you know, anyway, it's this is about you. Very, it's not about me. Yeah. It's very interesting. What is a nurse? Let's start with basics. What here. is a nurse? Let me see. A nurse is that person, if you've ever been in the hospital, uh, a nurse is that person. And have. I try to avoid it. They, they, <laughs> just, they creep me the fuck out. They really do. Oh, yeah. You don't you don't want to go to hospitals these days. Um, well, a nurse is the person that does all your care. I mean, uh, a nurse is, um, God, how can I put it into contact? I, you know, I've been one for about 
over 20 years and I don't even know how to describe it. So uh, nurses are very empathic. They'll do majority, probably over 90% of your care if you are hospitalized. Okay. okay. And it depends what unit you're on. Uh, nurses can take care of anywhere from one to about six patients now. I think that's the law. Uh, and um, so the doctors will than, write the if orders. more than six, sorry to interrupt you, uh -huh. but I must make sure I understand this. If it's more than six, there's a law that says that's too it much. It should be capitated. It's like class size. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I mean, when I started nursing, I was taking care of about 10 patients. Uh, wow. Yeah. Eight to 10. And my nurses I mean, it sounds had like about a lot, 30. But I don't know. What, like, what would yeah, you that's consider a lot. as a it, number? It's a lot. Uh, because you're doing all the care. I mean, you're, you're, you have a nursing assistant if you're lucky and they'll do all the bathing and changing of the linens, uh, you know, diapers, adult diapers, wow. whatever, uh, you know, getting rid of the urine, the feces, calculating all that stuff, doing Fun. the vital signs, which are the, which is your blood pressure, your temperature, your, um, the numbers, heart rate. Yeah. Getting Health all numbers. the numbers. Yeah. Right. So, uh, hopefully you have a nurse's aid or else you have to do all that yourself What's a nurse's as well. Aid? So a nur that's what the nurse's aid does. So they're your assistant. They're a nurse's assistant. Oh, so they'll do all the okay. scat work that I just explained. Did you say scat work? Scat. Scat work. Scat. S-C-U-T. What's like, that? Just like, you've never heard of that phrase? Scat work? I have work? not. I have it's not. just like the... I'm that guy. It's just just the bad job. The clean... Uh, it's just you're like the low man. Stuff. Yeah, the yucky stuff. Low okay. man on the totem pole, I guess you want to say. Gotcha. <laughs> so the nurse will go in. Because men can be nurses too. Of course. Yeah. I didn't say, I'm, am I talking in a female context? But frequently we said low man. So. Oh, okay. The low person <laughs> on the totem pole. So yeah, you just do all that. It's called scut work. What would you Google say is it. the ratio right now of uh, male, female? It's still really low. I, I think, um, I think it's about 10% to tell you the truth. 10, maybe 15%. I was just looking at some data the other, are, are males. Okay. Why do you think and, that is? Uh, it's still pretty new, you know? Uh, it, it's still a pretty new profession for men. Nurses? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, for many, many years, it's always been a female profession because females are tend to be more empathic, caregivers. But now more and more men are getting into the field and they usually tend to go into the emergency room or in the intensive care. Okay. Or sometimes the operating room as well. So those are the main areas that you'll see male nurses. But I was in the emergency room. I was That's a male nurse. Right. I was a male nurse on TV. Yeah. It was on TV. And NBC's trauma. trauma. Yeah. We shot on Treasure Island up in the Bay Area before I came down to LA. Um, it was weird because they had this elaborate set of a hospital emergency room. And I'd been in hospitals before and they always creeped me out. Like there's just this vibe. I can't describe it. I just, I always hated them. And that vibe was gone. And it just, it was seemed really odd because I felt really comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I think part of it too is my first time ever being on, it's effectively a sound stage. And I was, this was like the beginning of my entertainment career. And I was going like, wow, I think <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to do. This is so cool. A male but nurse on TV. I, I started in my first TV was, uh, and I did TV before film. I was a male nurse on TV. On That's cool. How many NBC. episodes were you on? Maybe two. Uh -huh. no, I was just, it was uh, background. I didn't have lines, but. Um, they just gave you stuff to hold and run around yeah, with. Yeah, you're running around. In the emergency room pretending to shock people. There's, I think I got a screenshot <laughs> of like, you know, a nanosecond of like, you know, they're rolling the new patient in that just got, you know, hella vacked in and everyone's rushing around. It's intense and, you know, I'm yeah. kind of like intense nurse in action, you know, <laughs> <laughs> wiping the frame for like, you know, a, a millitenth of a second. That's a word. Yeah. Yeah. So. Super cool. Well, that was like, that was back in the hey, 2009, didn't you say? Or what year was that? Yeah, somewhere around there, maybe 2010. But see, I, uh, I was a fake nurse. And let's talk about, you actually yeah. have nursing credentials. What are am, your credentials? Well, I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner. So what does that mean? So that means, um, this is how I used to explain it. If a nurse and a doctor were to have a baby, mm -hmm. then I would be it. 
So they would have a nurse practitioner. Nurse. So it's kind of a, a so it's like a, a mashup, a mashup a of a nurse okay. and a physician. So okay. basically, uh, we have a master's degree, so a graduate degree. So uh, you either do an associate's, go to a bachelor's, which is what I did, and then I went on to my master's. Okay, master's degree is about two years of practice, and we have to do about. Or not, I think they upped the clinical practice now, um, okay. but we have to complete about 600 hours of clinical practice wow. before we can go ahead and um, get our license to practice on our own. Mm -hmm. So we work in collaboration with a physician, but we, how that works is we, we do work as a, we can see our own patients. We assess, we diagnose, I have a DEA license, I can prescribe. Oh, wait, what's a DEA license? D -E -A, drug enforcement agency? Dr yes. Oh, wow. Right, okay. right. So it's... Uh, that so that theoretically, you won't be prescribing tons of opioids like certain doctors <laughs> with no, the no, huge I, help I of certain pharmaceuticals yeah, that I, just got covered by 60 Minutes again. Right, right. <laughs> I, saw, um, I saw that on the Colbert Show, actually. Yeah. He was it's mimicking been going on them. forever. There's been like yeah. all kinds of stories, but like nothing seems to be done about it, so... Right. Um, it's... That's a whole other yeah right. That's a whole and other rabbit hole. That's not that's not only a, another episode of a podcast. <laughs> that's an entire not, brand new podcast. Yeah, to like go it, deep it dive really on that. is. You can go and you know I haven't done that on my podcast yet, but I will. Oh, you haven't. So yet? Okay. no, no, it, it's coming. Gotta, though. it's yeah. coming. Yeah, because that might put you on the FBI subversive list. Oh, I'm just I know. <laughs> well, if I'm not, a, <laughs> I don't think I am. But I kind of uh, feel like our nation's owned by the pharmaceutical industry. Among it, it is. I used know. to work for big pharma as oh, well. Really? Yeah, I worked as a nurse consultant. I mean, going What's back. What's that? So, what does that mean? Well. So I was hired. Um, from... You're squinting like there's the <laughs> official story of what it means. And then there's what you actually did. And I they're know. not exactly the same right. thing. They're not the same thing. Okay. So basically, um, so there's salespeople, right? Yeah. Uh, pharmaceutical sales reps. Okay. And they weren't. They make bank. They make. Well, I think back in the day they did. If you worked for Pfizer and you okay. sold Viagra, you did. You know, I remember before the big short that like, a lot of people would like leave the mortgage industry and went into pharmacy. Yes, yes, because like, you could money. make like well over uh, well over one hundred fifty thousand, almost two hundred. Oh, yeah. You know, people oh, were yeah. paying off their mortgages, buying homes, yeah. and yeah. But then now, not really. They were They're, legit drug dealers. Yes, yeah. yes, especially in the opioid crisis um, at the beginning and the mid to early 90s going on those people and i don't even mean that as a derogatory phrase i mean it's literally you are pushing drugs you are pushing drugs that yeah technically happen to be legal ish right when but I, as we found that apparently even you know those quote <laughs> legal purveyors have been doing a lot of not so legal stuff right when i when i first became a nurse practitioner it was in 2005 when i was practicing okay. and i had all these pharmaceutical reps coming to me because we had so many new um vaccines that had come out so they had these oh, wow. pharmaceutical dinners and you go to these big steak dinners that they paid for at like a five-star restaurant and sure. so you watch somebody Bef before they take you to the the ski resort for a, <laughs> yeah. a, a luncheon that's to... when they were starting to yeah. cut it off like the oh, the feds really? were really getting on doing? them yeah. and just yeah because i would get free textbooks which were a hundred dollars each plus or just you know, I I'd get I mean, Starbucks literally every like day. Bribing you as yeah, a, oh yeah. as a professional in the industry. Yeah, and the doctor that I I worked for a private pediatric practice. He didn't want to see them, so he mm -hmm. just sent them all to me. So I you know I gotcha. became friends with them. Sure. And so one of my friends, whenever we'd go to a networking event or whatever, I would tell people I was like. Yeah, I save lives and she and she's my drug dealer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she How didn't did like, she react? She did not like that very much. Ooh. She's like, I sell vaccines. I sell vaccines. I sell vaccines. I make the world a better place. <laughs> yeah. I save lives. I'm like, all right. Okay. Okay. It's your story. You're sticking yeah. to it. We get it. Well, right. you know, and, and I would see these people in their nice little suits and their free sure. cars and their free yeah. gas cards. And, you know, and they, that's all they would do is like take people's stuff like food and right. and drink and free free gifts and it, i was like i want to do it, that too it reminds me when i was in the mortgage <laughs> business we'd have these title and escrow company reps and like that's the, the same kind of thing yeah, they they're do they're, yeah they're schmoozing because they're trying to they're trying to get your business yeah and it's funny how people like that are, are considered by you know a, a lot of polite folk 
you know, at events and dinner parties and um, cocktail moments, like these are solid citizens. Oh, I thought so. So if you say too. I'm a pharmaceutical rep, people are like respectful and yeah. they're like, oh, wow. Nobody ever asks a pharmaceutical rep what I get asked uh, all the time. Oh, wow. So how's the acting going? Oh, yeah. yeah. And no they should be asking me that to these people. When I was a mortgage broker. Crooked. Oh, how's the mortgage brokering going? It's it's like, yeah. oh, wow, you're a mortgage broker. Wow. Yeah, I just bought a house. I'm getting a second house. You know, oh, I got my investment person. Da, 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 da. Right. And I, I feel like it was the same thing with the pharmaceutical. It's rep. pretty much. Yeah. They yeah. have all their their T's crossed or I's dotted. Yet, they're doing it, this sordid stuff. Not it, all of yeah, them. Yeah, they're very, very crooked. They're very backstabby. Um, really? They so, love driving their free little cars and their gas wow. cards and taking their little free trips whenever they get a bonus and stuff like that. But that's all they live the pharmaceutical for. pharmaceutical reps? Yeah. All of them? Majority. I think it's the, the industry is experience. really, from my experience, yes, the industry is really back changing. In, back in the, uh, what is this, 2000s? Right, right. No, huh. no, this was just um, a few years ago. Uh, oh, really? Okay. I worked in pharma from two, 2014 to about 2015, about 2016, almost two years. Not that long ago. Yeah, yeah. I had a like 18 month contract as this mm -hmm. nurse consultant. So the reps were not getting the business that they should have. They weren't pushing this drug, which was an oral antiplatelet drug, which heart attack. Hold on. Hold victims, up, Professor. Heart attack. Oral heart attack victims. Anti Placement truck or oral antiplatelet. So, antiplatelet. Yeah. I've heard of that word. So that has something to do with blood, right? Right. So okay. it's to unclog your arteries, basically. Oh, it's just okay. to keep your platelets all squeaky clean and not it's drain off your your, uh, your arteries. Basically. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we were selling. Um, our drug cost three hundred fifty dollars. The generic was ten. Wow. We were one percent better than the generic. And yeah, and so they hired these nurses because they wanted to make sure as the patients were going home, we were first called transitional care nurses, okay. and then they changed us to consultant. So we were, as the patients went home, we made sure that they got on this drug and they stayed wait, wait, on the hold drug. On, hold on. So you were originally called transitional care, care nurses, nurse. uh -huh. and for some reason that was such a horrific term. Like, let's just call you a consultant, which yeah. like a consultant, it's so like vague and nebulous. Like, yeah, like an educator. Describe almost yeah. anything. Yeah, they kept changing our Why Why do you term. think that is? That they uh, changed Because the they didn't know what they were doing. They were just oh, trying okay. to, it's marketing. I mean, it's marketing and branding. So they were trying to yeah. brand us as these experts and we really weren't. Like I, wow. my, my expertise is pediatrics. All yeah. of a sudden I'm doing cardiac drugs. <laughs> for adults heart attack they're just going you have yeah. medical certifications yeah, that's yeah. good and that's enough. all they care about let's not get but, look at it too closely and the the talk about that for a quick sec like so i want to make sure we sure, list sure. out what are your professional like degrees and uh -huh. there's certifications too right right like right. things you have to get from the state that's not a, it's not an education thing it's a licensing thing sure yeah you you get licensed from the board of registered nursing okay uh i also have a cpr card Okay. Uh, so that I, you know, somebody anybody can get that. Right? Anybody CPR can get card? that. Okay. Yeah. So do you recommend that? Of course. Sounds like a silly yeah, for question, everybody. But, so okay. it, and now I should get that. I'm an Eagle Scout. I remember when yeah. I, did, I think I got one <laughs> yeah, way back in the day. Well, now they're Once doing this scout, emergency blood mm. thing. If someone gets shot, you know, yeah. because of all the shootings and stuff. Oh, yeah, and, right? yeah. So Seriously. now there's this stop the blood training type thing that's going on that wow. they're trying to get everybody to get. So Which yeah, you didn't have before. You don't really need, I mean, it's just kind of basic. You just put pressure on a wound. So, <laughs> so yeah. I don't know why they're making it a big thing. Well, I mean, so, do you find this? I mean, I don't, I don't do get it. Do you notice it. that it's a like, lot with people who are not in the medical profession where they kind of, because of the trauma and or the blood and or whatever mm -hmm. else, the emotions around oh, this yeah. event where like they, their normal intellectual capacity suddenly just like slams into a brick wall and you're sitting there going, um, blood's coming out. That can't yeah. happen forever. We need to stop that. Yeah. Which seems really basic. And I got to imagine as you're professional, you're right. sitting there going like, yeah, can you just put your hand there? Yeah, we'll, we'll make it nicer next. <laughs> yeah. But right now, let's make sure they don't die. Right. Do you right. notice that a lot where there's like a disconnect where people well, kind of turn their brain off because they're just like the trauma of it or the blood yeah, or whatever? I can say from my experience, I had a show um, in North Hollywood at the Lit Festival last year and someone fainted at my show Which festival the lit festival the north hollywood L the noho yeah noho lit fest okay cool so um they get a lot of people published authors 
I might have to go reading, to that. storytelling shows. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing it this year. It's usually oh, really? in October. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so there's different venues, the different um, shops open up. Right. Um, open up to people doing readings and stuff. So I did my storytelling show, Nurses and Hypochondriacs. Right. And um, one of my storytellers just told a crazy story. uh, And so this woman fainted, but it was hot. And she said she had a couple of beers or a couple of ciders. So she ended up fainting. Right. And she was on the floor on the sidewalk. So I went up to her and, um, you know, I was trying to help her out. She just had had a vasovagal response, which her blood pressure hey, whoa, dropped. Whoa, 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 slow up, professor. What, what, <laughs> what, what did you say? Uh, I uh, did used to teach at a, at a, at a few universities. So that's, you keep going. We're not all nurses here that listen to this podcast, including <laughs> yeah. the guy well, vasovagal, running the podcast. So. It, it just means that your blood pressure say that, drops. It's a phrase you said. Vasovagal response. Vasovagal Response. response what the hell does that mean so it just means your blood pressure drops why like, can't you just say that <laughs> your blood pressure drops because somebody just was like hey doesn't sound when like your blood Latin pressure enough. drops and you know yeah it doesn't sound that's that's definitely professional jargon. but hey every enough. industry has it so i can't get upset you know how yeah, it is sure so, yeah, so she dropped them. We have grips and... in the film business, you know? Right. We have best boys. It's like, oh, I don't even want to know what that was. Craft you know? services. Even before Kevin Spacey. <laughs> no, never too soon. Never too soon. <laughs> yeah, craft funny. services too. Like, yeah. Really? We do arts and crafts, you know? It's, <laughs> yeah. No, it's snacks. So, what? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just say snacks? I, I don't know. Exactly. Why don't craft you just services say food? Is shorter, just you know? food. Right? Like food. <laughs> right. It's the same thing. So um, I just had to get some ice for this woman just so that she would come to. Yeah. What did everyone and, else do? She faints. Uh, people are just looking at her on and, the floor. And why do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. I think people are just checked out. Don't care. So I, I walked wow. into a venue and there was a reading going on and I asked for ice. Nobody moved. Nobody did anything. So I had to scream and I go, wow. I need ice. Somebody's on the floor. And somebody gave me a pack of ice real quick and I put it underneath um, the woman's neck and she slowly started coming too. You know, she basically had just fainted. Yeah. So, and she came to and she was feeling a little bit better. Um, and I asked her if she wanted me to call an ambulance. She had said no. She didn't hurt her head or anything. She was perfectly fine. And somebody came out and started screaming at me. You disrupted the show. My, wow. Meanwhile, I'm sitting on the floor with this woman. You don't have to yell. Wow. You disrupted the show. How dare you There's do that? There's a medical that? emergency. And I'm just like. Someone is unconscious. I go, are you serious? Are you serious? Wow. I used to work at Disneyland. So that happened a lot. You really? know. <laughs> I guess I can imagine. Yeah. So yeah, that was like kind of my job, like going out into the You had a Captain Marvel people. up. Yes. And take command, take control. All the time. Meanwhile, we just got through a thing a week ago where, you know, people like to say things like man up. Okay, what what were all the <laughs> men doing? They're standing around doing nothing. Yeah. And and yelled at me. So, so and then they, my storyteller oh, was like, was Do you it, think was it, it was a guy me? yelling at you? It was a guy yelling of at me. Of course it was. Yeah, it was a guy yelling wow. at me. Wow. And um, and then my storyteller was like, Do you think she fainted because of my story? <laughs> if that doesn't symbolize exactly what's wrong with our country and our civilization there, I don't know what what uh, it's pretty no, a succinct I don't think so. It's the wow. weather and she had a couple of ciders and she wasn't sure. feeling well. She yeah. she didn't eat. It's a anything. confluence yeah. of, of conditions that yeah. sure. <laughs> wow. But you had to charge in there, take command. Yeah. Or else, you know, her it could have gotten knows worse. What it, it could have gotten Maybe worse. Maybe she hit her head. Who knows? Yeah. You know? That happens on my shows. This is why I don't do um live shows as much anymore because something would always happen. Medical. Are you serious? Yeah, in Denver we did a There'd show. There'd be a medical emergency yes. while you're doing yes. a live. Wow. In, in Denver we did a show at a bar called the Bicycle uh, Cafe, which is cool. They have a. That sounds cool. Yeah, they have a, a bar. Okay. A bike. Um, of course they do. Fixing place, and then they. Oh, really? oh even oh, but that's awesome. And a ca- and a cafe. Nice. Yeah, so it's three things in one. It's super awesome. Get your bike fixed. Have a beverage. You, you know, yeah, get some or, lunch. Yeah, and or, or watch a show. And um, awesome. so I want to go. Uh, it's super cool. They are awesome. Um, shout out to them. Copy but that. 
in Denver. They were great. So in 2017, we, it was the end of my show. I had put my friend on, who's also a nurse practitioner. Right. She'd never done a storytelling show or comedy before. Okay. Finally, after two drinks, she was like, oh, yeah, I think I can do it now. So she takes the mic and she has like a million stories. Okay. And so all of a sudden, the owner comes over to me and she's like, can you come over to the cafe? She's like, some guy just fell on the floor and hit his head. She's like, and I think what? he's on the spectrum. Wow. <laughs> So I'm just like, sure. So they I knew go you were over. a nurse. Well, I'm having my show, Nurses and Hypochondriac Storytelling. I mean, the, the owner knows I'm a nurse because, right, right. uh, you know. It's kind of hard to avoid. The, right. The I, I'm the producer of the show. So wow. And there was, I think there was about three nurses there. Uh, we had an x-ray tech. Who else was on the show? What, and the other ones were just why patient call stories. call an emergency responder when you have one already <laughs> on the scene? Here. Yeah. And, and there happened so to why, be... Well, since you're here... <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. She's like, I just want you to make sure. I mean, I, she's like, make sure that he's okay. So I went over there. He was already sitting up and there was a physician assistant there wow. looking at him. And uh, I was like, oh, cool. So I went and I asked him a few questions just to make sure uh, I did a mini neuro exam. Just asked him his name, if he knew where he was, what day it was, date, time, you know, stuff like that. So he was fine. And he did seem a little bit on the spectrum. He did have a little bit of a cut. You know, he didn't want to go with the ambulance. And I go, I think you should go, you know, and um, just to make sure that you were okay and and stuff. So, yeah. And then I went back to do my show. And as we were closing the show, the ambulance came. So it was a a great ending to the show. And my friend just kept she loved the mic. She's like, this is so cool. And she just (laughs) (laughs) it was suddenly her show. So it was That's great. Crazy. I was like, so you oh, well, don't do somebody's live shows dating. anymore. Cause... Well, not so much because yeah. it kind of was, I don't want to call it a curse, you know? I mean, it's we... almost like you attracted. Well, it's just like the knowledge because like, <laughs> like uh, there could be a medical emergency happening within a block of here right now, but we right. have no way of knowing it. We have it. no way of knowing it. And those it. people don't know there's a nurse here. So, right, exactly. You know, they're not going to come they're and They're not be motivated like, hey, come knocking the on the door and go, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we just, we got a situation right. here. Now, people will come up to me. Because I do comedy, and they'd be like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I got a really funny joke for you. You, might wanna, <laughs> know, you can use time, this right? in your act if you want." So it's like yeah. they have advice. Now I'm curious. <laughs> at my sense is like you as a nurse. When people find out about, it, they do like we're just having the podcast. Like they enlist your aid w- without like hiring you. <laughs> They're like, mm-hmm. can you come do some community service over here? Oh yeah, all or, the but, time. Or do you find people like um like tell you what to do, or is it pretty much like? I've got this pain in my lower back. Can you, do you know what that might be? You know, it's mostly the guys that I date, you know, which is what the show is. Nurses and hypochondriacs. Like I had this guy tell me he had herpes simplex too. And then he tried to, I like to say, I I don't want to, this is my date. date. Yeah. And I don't want to insult you. It's first date. Yeah. So he's like, I just, I just got to tell you. Why not? I'm positive for herpes too. And then he was, you know, I mean, it's good that he's disclosing. I mean, that's the morally right thing to do. Right. And he was trying to get me to have sex with him. Uh, and he was like, you know, sure, it's, why it's, not? it's no big deal. Like you just wear wow. a condom. Everything's great. You know? And, and he's, and, and like I said, I don't want to insult you, but he was mansplaining what herpes too is to me. Wow. <laughs> how, now, how would that be insulting to me? <laughs> Cause I said mansplaining. mansplaining? <laughs> Uh, well, it's accurate. It happens. And I've done so, it. So you're not insulting me. You're just going like, yeah, that happened. It continues to happen. It's like, it's no big deal. Like you just get like, it feels wow. like the flu, this and that. And I just was like, my, my eyes were bulging out. And he's like, but I told my other date and she was okay with it. I'm like, you had it. First of all, you had wow. another date. Second of all, she also a pediatric nurse practitioner that has a DEA license <laughs> that has treated herpes simplex too. Right? You're like, sir, put down <laughs> the shovel. Back away. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So that does you're happen. You're so bossy. Oh my God. You're a bitch. Yeah. I'm, talking I'm, like I'm a just going to take my nurse picture off of the dating sites because I think it is an attraction. Wow. You know, it's almost like a uh, an inadvertent red heron or yeah, yeah. distraction. That's like, yeah. you know, so people ask you what you do. But I'm a consultant. Yeah. I'm a consultant. <laughs> I have a podcast. That's it. Yeah. So what's it about? It's about stuff. So, you know, I, I don't know. Do you listen to podcasts? Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. It's all right. Yeah. Hey, you know, what do we, what should we eat here? You know? Yeah. <laughs> but then they get addicted. They'll listen to my podcast. They get yeah. addicted and then they have to come tell me their story. Oh, by the way, <laughs> the creepy like, groupies. Lovely. Yeah. 
Wow. You'll get them, I'm sure. Oh, thank you. Start. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I need in my life. More complication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess it's it's uh I guess it's true of any anyone that's in the public eye to a certain degree is you have it just it always kind of amazes me. I guess it's a, an element of like celebrity. Um, which there's a lot, there's a wide, there's a spectrum of celebrity. There is a spectrum of celebrity. But, but there's you this haven't disconnect. Been, you haven't been yeah. stalked on social media. I have. <laughs> so I don't think many guys me. have, but I recognize because I hear about it all the time. In females or oh, for yeah. guys? Yeah, in females, women yeah. Women get stalked and it's so... It's almost like um, your engineer is nodding. So see, she knows. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like my buddy yeah. um, who's African-American. Uh, he and I were having a conversation and uh, some white guy walks up and he chimes in with a question that was just like clear cut racist. And I'm whoa. like, whoa. And this is during like kind of a, a business thing. So it's like. All right. And this guy ended up being kind of generous. So to the benefit of my buddy. But afterwards, I asked my buddy, I'm like, did you hear what the hell he just said? And my buddy's like, you know, uh, it happens so often. It just kind of goes in one ear and out the other. And I feel like that's the way with women, especially after work with Kavanaugh. It's like whether it's whether it's uh, being assaulted or raped or stalked or catcalled. What else can I add to the list? What am I missing? Like. If I feel like nearly every woman has has encountered that, if not once, many times in her life. And just the culture is such that you don't talk about it, you ignore it, somehow it's your well, fault. It's, and it's, it's not until now with me too that we're finally going, eh, it's not your fault and it's kind of not cool and we should probably stop doing this, guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, It's also embedded in our culture it's embedded in our history as well you know going back even to the roman times and stuff i mean my name is ursilia which was uh romulus's wife remus and romulus the two founders of rome you know and the way right. they raped and pillaged the Sabin, <laughs> no, they raped and pillaged the Sabin village and that's how they got their women to come over so Fun times. Wow. Fun times. Fun times. So that's times. where it all kind of comes I'm from. I'm glad I don't you think brought people... that up since we are on the Mark Roman Empire, <laughs> exactly. also a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah, it's true. But that, you know, so I, I don't think people realize that. And if you look at uh, Greek mythology as well, it's really in that as well. Oh, also. it's insane. So yeah. it's it's all in that. So it's kind of embedded in the culture. So it, I, I mean, this is great that what's going on but it's going to take a whole lot more because this is centuries yeah. and centuries and centuries it's from the deep. dawn of civilization right and suddenly we're like maybe we should finally address this <laughs> yeah no like, in 2018 i mean i'm a white guy yeah. so I, I get it that like there's a lot i don't even like recognize or get because i haven't experienced it it's mm-hmm. not familiar to me um but i feel like it's incumbent on me to like to fucking listen for a second and not get all defensive and all, oh no, how does this, how does this hurt me? It's like, I'm a dude. I, I, I'm not the one who's being hurt here. Right. And there's this whole process that's going to have to unfold and right, it's probably right. going to take a very long time. So yeah, I agree I mean, with what, that. What would, you, what, what would you say if, if there was a guy listening right now who's like, and you're a nurse, uh-huh. a guy listening right now who thinks, what could I do to make things better so women can feel safer and a little bit happier just in general living in society? What could these guys do? I think it's just be themselves. I I really feel I was on another podcast, which was more of a dating podcast. and, And we talked about this and it was two males that were the hosts. And the thing of it is, I don't think men know what to do anymore. You know how to approach a woman and you'll see on social media, they'll be like, hey, beautiful. You're so sexy. You're so gorgeous. You're so this. You're so that. Well, how do you know that you've never even met the person? So there's a, yeah. a lot of love bombing, you know, and I think love it's just bombing. just be normal. 
and approach the person and say, hey, my name is so-and-so, you know, what are you into? It, it just like you're not even talking to a female. You're just talking to maybe a gender, gender neutral person. Right. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what the solution is. I think, you know, men have been taught through rom-coms, you know, and you should know this. You're in the film industry. Uh, for those of you who attend Hillsdale <laughs> College, uh, rom-coms are romantic comedies. comedies. <laughs> Yeah. Jennifer and, Aniston's not always involved, but <laughs> right might be. And, and they're taught that they have to, you know, um, chase this woman and do all this stuff. And once they get the knight her in shining armor, right, it's the knight in shining armor. And it, it's it's all about the chase. And once you get her, it, it's like then it ends and then they move on. Either there's no more adrenaline or there's, you know, the prize isn't as great as they thought. And they have to go on and get that same adrenaline high. Interesting. You know, it's very Pepe Le Pew, who uh, yeah. Pepe Le Pew is going after a cat that's not even in his same gender. Right. And she's like, uh, get away from me. And right. he's like, oh, I just love her so much, this and that. And she's just repulsed. It's a comedic children's cartoon about <laughs> stalking. And that's probably yeah. putting it very kind. Right. And, and you got to think men have been ingrained. It's like programmed almost. That this is how they're supposed to act. And that's all they know. Yeah, but is that an excuse that a guy can go, it's, it's, well, hey, I'm just, this is how I am. This is how they made me. So, well, you know, deal. But men do do that. Men do do that and they won't change. So I, I hear it all the time. I talk to someone. They, they can change, though. Exactly. The they whole, don't, but they don't the realize that. Man up. They don't like, realize that. I talk is it to so one. so scary that yeah. as a, I, to me as a guy, like I, I grew up believing a very specific way I had a certain set of beliefs that were that i didn't choose they right. were forced on me right. by my parents programming yeah and it's kind of like scientology that wow maybe you know maybe there's you know there's there's an alternative to this and i found that you know i that i could change and right. is it scary yeah is does it upset your world yeah does it you know, uncomfortable. Uh, absolute. Is it worth it? Yeah. Well, fuck yeah. Does it make the world a better place? It, it could. Yeah. Can I, you it, do it as a man? Yes. Any man can do it. I'm just yeah. speaking as a guy. So I just, no, I'm, it's, I'm, it's true. It, it's uncomfortable because it's no longer familiar to you. I mean, you know, yeah. anytime you get out of your comfort zone, you're just like, wait a minute, I'm doing something new. I mean, I mean, even for you, you're doing a new, like, I'm new like I have facial hair now. I used to be clean shaven and wear a fake mustache. Now I got this full on cause Thanos happened. So I got this full on <laughs> beard and that's a change. Right. right. And I've adapted to it. So right. it's like I don't I don't get as a guy. Well, you have to adapt why it's to so many roles. Threatening to men, the the notion that our civilization is at a point where we're going. You know all that stuff we've been doing. Maybe that wasn't such a hot idea. I don't know. I right. just I, 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 guys, as a guy, I'm telling you, you can change. You can listen, and you know it's not about your daughters or your nieces or your your sisters. Think about it as if you exactly. were a woman. Or Joe Rogan makes an interesting mm -hmm. analogy. He'll t tell guys, think of yourself going into a gay gym. Yep. Do you feel yep. all those eyes? Okay, that's what it's like for mm -hmm. every single woman on the planet, only every single moment of her life. Mm -hmm. Get it? I agree. Guys can Completely. change. They it's can just change. Guys own the culture right now. I yeah. ran through the numbers about just our, our friggin' Congress. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of seats held by men that they shouldn't hold if this is a democracy and it's about reflecting the population. Mm -hmm. Our current our Congress has never reflected on gender remotely. So you have these guys that have seats mm -hmm. that do not belong to them. It's interesting that you bring that up. I'm writing an article I mean, just now. It's just math. It's right. not like, you know, I'm not a, being a man hater. I'm happy being a man. I don't want to transition <laughs> to a woman. I'm okay with people who make that choice. It's just not mine. I'm really happy being a dude. But as a dude, I can sit here and look at the math and go, fuck, this is not a democracy. Right. Because where are all the women? Where are all the because women? Because there's more women in this country than there are men. It's 58 right. point or 50 point eight percent based on i think it's the 2011 is the last census mm -hmm. so you know 
And like I like I was saying, I'm writing an article on nurses Sorry, getting like... into it's okay. <laughs> nurses nurses getting into politics, you know, because the Gallup poll they did a Gallup poll and they found that nurses were the most um, trustworthy people, trustworthy profession. Okay, and I think it's five years in a row, ten years in a row. I forgot what the study said. Uh, so I'm like, so, so why aren't we more running for politics? You know why? Cause we why? call people out on their shit. That's why. <laughs> Interesting. Which we wouldn't take the bribe. Me to, we wouldn't take the bribe. We, you know, most of us wouldn't take the bribe. Wh- what's it like as a nurse working with, wait for it, doctors. Doctors. Well, as a nurse practitioner, I have to work with physicians all the time. And uh, when I started in my career as a nurse, of course, I always got along. I never had any problems. I mean, occasionally there were some that were very egotistical, right. maybe on the spectrum, which they're they're finding out now. There's a lot of surgeons who are kind of on the Asperger spectrum. Where oh, interesting. Yeah, so they're only focused on one thing, which makes them really makes good sense. doctors. They're specialists. They're genius. Yeah, but yeah, but and they're great. I mean, absolutely who else is gonna shitty be interpersonal of, skills. Thank you very much. And that makes They're a lot assholes. of sense. Right. Well, because they They're don't. They're genius assholes yeah. that will save your life, mm-hmm. but you don't, don't want to live with them. You don't want to be around them. You don't want to go out and no. have a beer with them. You don't want to go skiing with them. Uh, not really. Yeah. You don't so want to do you gotta, anything with you gotta them. You got to learn how to accept their personality types. And I, I did very early so on. So you're a woman accommodating. Uh-huh. A man being an asshole because but there are also female we, doctors. We live in a too. society where that lets men yeah. be assholes. There are female doctors too, and they also have ego ty- egotistical personalities, which oh, I've really? come across. Yeah, I've had many, many friends. There was okay. there was a period of time I had a lot of um, physician friends, and they'd invite me to all the special parties. Yeah. And it's because I'm so empathic. I would just deal with their personality. I would just like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. So I was like their sidekick. You know, I was kind of the, <laughs> the Robin to their Batman, you know, gotcha. <laughs> so that's kind of how it is. And if you're that type of personality, you know that this person has to be the one in charge. This person has to be the one in the room. This one has to be getting all the attention. And once you're OK with that, you're just so like, you're whatever. you're catering and accommodating. Exactly. So that that was my personality, you mm-hmm. know, and as a nurse practitioner, Yeah, I have to work with a lot of them. I tend to get along with them very, very well because I have to call. I have to be able to call them and ask them questions Mm -hmm. a lot of the times. You know, if I have an admission going into the emergency room, stuff like that. I was afraid this was going to happen. We're running. Yeah, we're running to the end of time. And and we got to talk about your podcast. So let's wrap up with it because I listened to your first episode, which as podcast creators, we all hate that. But as a podcast listener, I get it because... Anytime I stumble across a new podcast, I'm like, I want to start at the beginning. Yeah. I don't want to miss anything. But yeah, yeah. as podcast creators, we're like, that was like my worst stuff. I actually yeah. am doing this. But yeah. I listened to your most recent podcast, uh, which we mentioned. Uh, oh, about earlier. the ghosts. The yes. Ghosts. I see dead people. Yeah. yeah. With my psychologist friend that I met in London. I actually met him on YouTube. And I happened to be in London a few years ago and we met at uh, King's Cross train station and he gave me his book on spiritual release, which King's was... Cross. I think that's a Pet Shop Boys song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very Harry Potter. So <laughs> it's like Namaste. one of the main train stations in London, I think. Um, it's anyway, British. yeah, gotcha. it's British. Yeah. And so he gave me his PhD study work, uh, okay. and, uh, very interesting. So I just had him on the podcast for our Halloween episode and he's doing paranormal research in hospitals on physicians and nurses seeing apparitions. As someone so. who grew up very religious and has become very agnostic as a result of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet I'm like Mulder. I want to believe <laughs> I found the, uh, I know, it's a dilemma. What do I, I do? I have one foot in, one foot out uh, always. So I'm, I'm it's very scientific. Science has yeah. a lot that has been covered, but there's a lot that has yet to be addressed. Exactly. And we probably lack the tools or the capacity to, 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 to do that yet. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole realm of stuff that's just simply undiscovered or unexplained or un, you know, just we don't fucking know. And we don't, we, we haven't don't. gotten to f- to a point where we even know how to grapple with it right. or contend and, and, with and it. And what um, Dr. Palmer, the PhD dude that I had on, he said that science doesn't want you to do that. Science doesn't want you to believe that there is another side, you know, mm-hmm. but quantum physics proves it. And, 
He has research, and there's a ton of research out there if you really look for it. You can't destroy energy. It's got to go somewhere. It's energy. Very good. Yeah, exactly what we talk about. Yeah, that's what it is. It's energy. Yeah, so how I started with my podcast very quickly. I know where... And your podcast is called? Nurses and Hypochondriacs. What's a Um, hypochondriac? A hypochondriac is a person who believes that they're always sick or there's always something wrong with them. Like they're always having to get medical attention or always... Uh, having to, I mean, with Google, everybody's a hypochondriac now. You think right. that you have these symptoms, you think that you're sick, and but you're really not. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I did a lot of uh, research in nurses in the media. I attended several conferences at UCLA. Um, I've written a few articles on nurses in the media. So I, I really love the topic on how nurses were being seen in mm-hmm. the media setting, just like your role on the trauma, you know, yeah. and they're not being seen um as they should like doctors are are in that role like doing all the care for the for the patient right. and the nurses are in the background like you were uh which is not really the case uh if you've ever been a patient in a hospital you will know that the nurses do the majority of your care and um so yeah i research that a lot acknowledge that uh yes they do Yes, they do. In they the know real it. World. Oh, yeah. They okay. doctors cannot function without without nurses. So right. <laughs> and the majority Hashtag of the it ones takes a nurse. Yeah, the majority of the ones that I've worked with and uh, get that they get that we're the right hand man. I mean, yeah. we are their eyes and ears for the patient, and so because they're not there twenty four seven with the patient, but we are for right. twelve hours or eight hours or whatever it is. So we need to communicate with them on what's going on. And so they're the ones who are the educated ones. Okay, give this med, do this, do that. For me as a nurse practitioner, I can do that on my own because I've been trained. So I can see, I see patients and I will prescribe and, you know, whatever, do education, whatever I have to. And if I have a question about something, I speak to a physician and I just have a physician look at my charts once a month or whatever. Like okay. they look at 10 of my charts. So that's how I practice, but I practice, I function on my own. So yeah. So I started doing the media thing. I started out as a one person show cause I was dating all these hypochondriacs. <laughs> <laughs> so I did okay. three performances. Okay. Uh, then I did five performances at the fringe festival as a storytelling show. The Hollywood fringe festival. The Hollywood yeah. fringe festival. Okay. Yes. So I got, several um patients actual hypochondriacs nurses to come on and tell their stories we did five performances we have 13 performances total the two in denver oh (laughs) right with the event we just did a mental health i I collaborated with a a friend and we did a mental health um, awareness show called admitted so uh, about people's psychiatric hospital admissions um yeah, and I, I started giving continuing education units for people who would come to the show. I was nurses. just going to ask you about yes. that. So this is crazy. So people can listen to your podcast yes. and they actually get college credit. Well, they get they get one hour of credit going towards their license. So nurses in California. Oh, state licensing. Yes, okay. they're state. Because okay. we have to still, do. that's, that's yeah. valuable. And that's we have to do 30 hours amazing. of education uh, every two years. Oh, so, continuing education. Right. So okay, they can okay. they could clock in and uh, listen to the podcast for an hour, usually 45 minutes to an hour. So I'll give an hour of credit. Um, and That's what they I need to do for survey. this podcast. I need to make this podcast yeah. continuing education. <laughs> you should. It is, it is an education of what's going on out there. You I know? mean, the podcast that I'm doing here, it's, uh, you know, my... Uh, Example is Mark Marin with his WTF podcast, which arguably has become the new. He was just in concert. Did you go see his uh, mm. show? No. <laughs> no. Um, I think this past weekend. I, I saw him. Uh, I was with a buddy at the comedy store a few months back, and we were kind of off to the side near the front. And he was like sitting there waiting to go on as Polly Shore of all people was. Um, Introducing him, which I think is one wow. of my, my, yeah, I think that was probably one of the best moments of my life to see <laughs> Mark Marin fidgeting, enduring Polly Shore. Shore and Sino Man. Oh wow! Uh, bringing him up on stage, which he he, you know, it's not the first time because Polly's mom, who's now passed away, may she rest in peace, uh, Mitzi, uh, the legendary Mitzi Shore. She that's that's her club. And it's really? now, oh yeah. And it's now, oh, I didn't know you that. Know, it's now his. So, wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Interesting. So yeah, we're uh, like, um, Richard Pryor got started when he did, uh, 
you know, live on the Sunset Strip. Yeah. That was at the Comedy Store. Wow. So that yeah, is it's, pretty cool. It's, uh, legends cool have come facts. out of there. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I learned a lot about, you know, uh, about the comedians, about actors, about musicians, about, you know, the nitty gritty ins and outs of mm-hmm. what does it take to, to do something in entertainment when there's really no guidebook and what guidebooks there are, are really crappy with people with agendas yeah. and it's just either false information or it's wrong information right. or, you know, and you have a lot of people that just, you know, they're incented not to tell you yeah, anything that's secrets. actually helpful. Right. So right. I found his podcast enormously instructive and listening to his and other podcasts over the last decade has frankly that, that I, without knowing it, it, it made me, I want to say I'm an expert, but I, I feel like I have a lot of knowledge that mm-hmm. informs my every decision with this podcast that I've created yeah. that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't had that experience. So yeah, I think it's listening to the right podcast is absolutely yeah. a valid continuing education. I agree. I bring on like storytellers, comedians as well, actors, activists, and they're and it, we talk about hot topics. I'm available. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally <laughs> want to have you on. I do have an idea. Okay. So probably um since yeah, you're talk about an actor yeah. who played a nurse, I have a friend who's I am. a nurse who plays an actor, who is an actor. A nurse who <laughs> is an actor. Uh yeah, okay. So right? do, you, do you see that? So I was I thinking get it. about that. I love it. Yeah, Let's yeah. do it. So I think that would be a fun one to have both of you on. So much more I wanted to cover, but I think we've yeah. got some of the key the key things. Um, so where do people go to listen to your podcast? Uh, I'm on Podbean and iTunes, so Nurses and Hypochondriacs. You turned me on to Podbean. I'm on the Podbean, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, are you just yeah. on Podbean now, too? Yeah. I like Podbean. It's not bad. Good stats. It's not bad. I like the stats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's easy so to Apple use. So Apple Music... I need to get on uh, iTunes and Podbean. So that's what okay. we're on right now. Um, we're on some other Swedish platform, which I don't even know how I got on there. So. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes, but is there Apparently, like... Apparently there's a lot of uh, hypochondriacs in is Sweden. Is there a website people can go yes, to? Yes, you can go to www.roguenursemedia.com. That is my nonprofit, my 501c3. Oh, um, wow. okay. Yeah, and also... Roguenursemedia.com. Roguenursemedia.com. Okay. So I also have a clip on there of uh, me, uh, my nurse on the street bit, where I'm interviewing your people. <laughs> my my you people? Were, you weren't there my that tribe. day. Your tribe. I think I sat out last time when I was preparing. I didn't get a chance to yeah. watch it. But yeah, yeah. About healthcare, you know, like it's I interviewed. It's on Vimeo, right? Is yeah, it's on okay, Vimeo. Okay. Um, I interviewed, like, it's also on the website. So I interviewed, like, Freddy Krueger, Darth Rogue Vader. Nursemedia.com. Yes. So right. it has that little clip on there. And that was done nice. in 2015. So it was fun. So, Priscilla, this thank was you awesome. so much, Mark. Yeah, it was. With lots of fun. <laughs> Nurse Ursilia, my sister podcaster. Well, that just flew by. Hope we covered uh, all the important stuff, but uh, I guess I'll pick up a little bit. I guess she's having me on her, on her podcast, Nurses and Hypochondriacs. Looking forward to that, and she's just been a great, a great pal, fellow podcaster, kind of showing me the ropes here as I'm the freshman, I'm the newbie. Hey, show notes uh, are at markromanempire.com for any links or other groovy stuff that was mentioned, and thank you for your patience with that. You can listen on Mixcloud, Podbean, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube. Please follow, like, and share. Those really help our numbers and our metrics in getting new audience and advertisers. More platforms like Bullhorn, Spotify, and yes, Apple Music, what used to be iTunes, in progress. Discover how to support the podcast and claim your free stuff at markromanempire.com. Click support. Fire your boss and build your empire. My new talk for groups. Go to themarkroman.com and click speaker. All groovy ways you can support the podcast because no empire was ever built without a little commerce. Want special deals? Join my mailing list, the Mark Roman Empire Census. What kind of deals? Well, last week's census members enjoyed it two for one on my autographed poem, Son of Elmer Gantry's Bitch. What deal would it be this week? Well, whatever it is, it will 
only be available to those of you included in the Mark Roman Empire census. To join the census, go to markromanempire.com and click census. Twitter at the Mark Roman. Instagram, as ever, at Vegas90210. You can email me, you really can, at the podcast here at romanpodmail at gmail.com. Oh, you know, I feel like I'm starting to get, get a cadence here with a podcast. Do you guys think that's what's going on? I don't know. I think so. I really like to star as born. Hmm. Things are good. I think things are good. Are things good? I think they're good. They're good. Yeah. I got to hike running again. Farewell until next week. Remember Clanolin and Prince St. Paul. I am the Mark Roman.